I'm sure most of you have personally encountered or have certainly heard about someone who just can't get over their ex. In my experience, it's mostly women talking about how horrible their ex was, but still end up drunk in bed with them on the weekend. It got me thinking, how can they be so attached to one guy that the other guys cannot match up? You know, you would think the physical and emotional attributes surely can be replaced with how much attention most women get. You know, it doesn't matter how tall, handsome, funny, attractive your partner is. You know, what does that one X have that you can't replicate? And my hypothesis was, to put it bluntly, uh, the dude nutted in her too many times. And there was a DNA transfer during sex impacting the person, particularly female, emotions. If you think about all of the diseases that can be transmitted during intercourse, obviously DNA is being transferred too. You know, it would make sense biologically that if someone mates with someone else, there's some sort of natural incentive created. And again, the reason I'm focusing on women here is because, I mean, I haven't really heard men talk about their exes that much, and women are the ones receiving the DNA from the men's semen and sperm. Maybe there is a small amount of DNA that the man absorbs from the woman, but I don't think it's nearly as significant as having a dude bust in you a thousand times in a three-year relationship. The assumption being that all of that DNA cumulatively over that period of time has transferred some sort of molecules to the woman, making her committed to that man. Uh, so the first study, because this is not just a nonsense hypothesis, is sperm transport in the female reproductive tract. Cervical muscles filter out low quality sperm, then uses muscular contractions to enhance passage of sperm through the uterine cavity. Sperm is then stored in a reservoir and maintained in a fertile state until ovulation approaches, where the sperm become activated, allowing them to proceed through heat and chemical stimulation to the egg. And most people are under the assumption that, you know, reproduction is some ridiculous race of the fittest sperm to the egg, oh, who can swim faster? And that the woman has to be like peak fertility and ovulation. But in reality, the female's reproductive system is filtering out the sperm and storing the best ones. Kind of like in real life, where guys are chasing after girls, going out to bars and clubs, thinking they're competing with the other males. But in reality, the female already knows what she wants, what she's looking for, and she is making the final decision in who gets to go back to her uh, smelly fish market of an apartment. Huh? <laughs> Second study is sperm-mediated DNA transfer to cells of the uterus and embryo. And the study basically explains that there is a DNA transfer between all cells in contact with the sperm, even with something like HPV DNA, seemingly neutral and passive. Completely undetectable DNA changes, no inflammation, so there's definitely a lot going on that the average person does not know that we haven't been told about by people doing these studies. The next one being absorption and distribution of estradiol from male seminal emissions during mating. So when a male has healthy sperm, it will contain significant amounts of estradiol, a female hormone that promotes fertility. The summary of that study is that hormonal content of sperm is contributing to hormonal changes in the female. So based on just those two previous studies, we know that a male sperm is biologically altering the hormones and DNA of a female. So it's not a stretch to say that is also altering the behavior of a woman, female, whatever. Next up is the role of orgasm in the development and shaping of partner preferences. So there are various neurotransmitters released during orgasm modulating sexual behavior and reward. This affects the person's attraction and bonding towards their partner. The activation of these opioid systems in the body plays a role in dictating what the person's type is. Basically, if you mate with a specific type of person over and over again, you'll be more and more attracted to those features and more specifically, that person. The role of oxytocin in relation to female sexual arousal. So we know oxytocin is a feel-good hormone released during sexual intercourse, more specifically when you orgasm. 
hypothetically, if a male makes a female orgasm over and over and over again, the continual release of oxytocin interaction with those transmitters is going to actually alter her brain behavior, hypothetically making the female attached to the male. To me, this is really just scratching the surface of the research and studies you can pull up, but it's safe to say 100% that there's a lot going on from the DNA transfer between partners to you know, the chemical activity in the brain that you know, we don't really know or talk about. And as you can imagine, you know, if you have more and more partners and a ton of DNA transfer, you know, how does that affect the person? Does it become more and more difficult to commit themselves to one new partner? People lie about their body count, you know, how many people they've slept with, because it's viewed as dirty or promiscuous, reflecting their mental state. Like, yeah, if you can't keep it in your pants, how are you going to be in a healthy relationship? But it seems there's a lot more to that biologically. It's not just a number. So, you know, not only is the person, like, unable to control themselves, then there's more biological incentives that have been transferred to them through DNA or hormones or whatever that is making it even harder. And again, I'm not really sure how much this pertains to males and if there is a substantial DNA transfer to the male in sex, but I'm assuming it's not really comparable as I couldn't find too many studies on it. So hopefully uh, this gives you guys some incentive. I guess ladies, maybe don't let random dudes nut in you. And men, I guess if you really like a girl, try to convince her to let you nut in her. So uh, for lack of better terminology and uh, rude words. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you can please drop a like, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank to support me through all of my businesses. We have the Male virility and female fertility, uh, bovine glandulars on organsupplements.com. <laughs> and this got me thinking, uh, yeah, this is a pretty ridiculous topic, but on TikTok the past two weeks, there's like this, um, oh man, it's like a page, it's called like the dick fixers, and it's so fucking stupid, it's unbelievable. So before you guys think this is stupid, uh, go check out the dick fixers on, uh, on TikTok and see uh, how much nonsense is going around. Thank you.